place, a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time, just enjoy the ride. Who would you live next to? If you lived at the zoo, who would you pick to be your neighbor? You have so many friends to choose from. We started our neighborhood adventure by exploring the map. With so many places and neighbors to choose from, where should we go first? To Asia, Amy said, with a quick stop at the aquarium. So down the trail we walked. Then around the corner, we came to a truly frightening sight. A gigantic maw with jagged teeth open before our eyes. Strangely, though, people gathered around these impressive jaws, clamoring to take that perfect pick. Quickly setting up our camera, we jumped into the fray, throwing ourselves between those massive teeth and captured that memorable moment. First stop on our list of potential neighbors was Miss Elephant, who might be the best choice of neighbor. Although you should bring her some fruit, or she might shake her trunk at you. Across the street was Mr. Leopard, whose tails were legendary. But he seemed a bit shy and darted back into his home. Then we zigged back over to the other side of the street, where we met Miss Tiger, who was a bit of a chatty catty. At first confused, we approached the next house, where no one seemed to be home. Then whoosh, he was there inspecting his bed. Would you choose Mr. Porcupine, who grumbles and can be a bit prickly at times? Then taking a break, we listened to the sounds of the forest on a tape player. What a blast from the past. Would you caper with a taper, all dressed in black and white? What of those mischievous river otters? However, today, they were snuggled in their bed and didn't want to play. Leaving the Asian forest, we walked past the gently swaying bamboo, lanes filled with flowers, and wonderfully clear signage that dotted the neighborhood. We thought to ourselves, we would never be lost here, which is good to keep in mind when you have so many neighbors to choose from. Sliding down the lanes, we thought of joining the penguins, who are always dressed to the nines. But alas, they seem pretty content with their neighbors. Disappearing into the vast Pacific, we saw some kids playing with the jellies. I would watch out for them. Although they look pretty, their words can be very stinging. Mr. and Mrs. Shrimp didn't seem to care about those jellies while sitting on their rocks. In the mysterious tidal flats, you have the colorful anemones, who are always welcoming you inside their shallow waters. Swimming out to sea, we thought you could always glide on over to those rays whose smile is infectious. Even Mr. Shark, hammering away on his home, can't spoil their good time. Coming up for air, Amy stopped to smell the flowers. Woo, that was a long swim. Still along the shore, we thought, what about the brother's walrus? One brother hogs the pool, swimming to and fro while the other splashes about, leaving quite a slippery mess. The seals next door are always looking for a meal and love a good deal, waving for a steal. Climbing off those slippery rocks of the shore, we made our way to the Arctic tundra, where the oxen call home. Would you choose to live next to them? It is said they can get a bit musky. Finding the tundra a bit frigid, we delved into those woods and thought maybe you would live next to the wolves, who are always on the alert as the local neighborhood watch. Not just a zoo and an aquarium, but this place is home to all of these plants and more. That was our day exploring the neighborhood at the Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium. And we're actually almost done with our day. We've been here for a couple hours and I think we're probably not ready to head out. With so many friends, fuzzy, scaly, or furry, who would you pick?